Hi, this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. It's spring. Unfortunately, with spring comes pests, varmints, predators. By predators or pests, what I'm referring to more or less, this time of the year around here, what we have mostly is weasels, um, small pests. Weasels will get in and actually attack the chickens, which is no good. Uh, squirrels, we have big gray squirrels, chipmunks, they get in there and eat the feed. Costs us money, so that's no good. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to build a cheap, simple, and effective box trap that also is a no-kill, actually. It doesn't hurt them at all. It just holds them captive like a have a heart trap without you going to the store and spending $50 on a have a heart trap. Now I'm gonna make this trap out of just a couple of pieces of this scrap lumber from down in the basement, some string, a dowel, and a few nails. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so I've selected these two just regular boards. This one isn't even plain on both sides. It's hit and miss. I'm going to use that for the bottom and the back. I'm going to make the sides and the top and the ends from this piece, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these down real quick, and I'm going to write the sizes on them so that you guys, if you want to copy this trap size exactly, um, you can. But bear in mind, all of the size parts of this are flexible. You can make this thing small enough for a chipmunk. You can make it big enough for an elephant. The reason I'm making this round is because I don't want any interference from the wood. And this is going to be the hinge point where this swings. Okay, that should do it. It's nothing fancy, I just kind of made a little bit of a point. You don't want it too pointed. You want to leave a flat spot on the top. Um, you'll see why I'm doing all this stuff as we put it together. I promise. It'll all make sense soon. Okay, so I've got these all labeled right now as much for your benefit as I do for mine. Um, Side number one, side number two, obviously identical. Top is almost identical. Actually, it is identical, except for the fact that I rounded the back side to give that a place to turn against the back piece. This is your back wall, your side walls, your bottom, your front, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it other than putting it together and drilling one hole. Uh, this dowel, this is going to be the trigger. I've got to cut that down when I figure out what the length's got to be, put a point on it, and uh, put a couple notches in it for the string. And once I've done that, I think all we really need is a couple of thumbtacks, and we'll be in business. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done a little bit of cheating here. I've added some nails because I'm only one person, and I don't really have a good way to hang on to this. But I know where all the pieces go, so I can go through and start the nails ahead of time. Make it a lot easier. I also nailed the top and the front of the door together. Now that's the piece with the rounded back. And you'll see why we've rounded that in a minute here. So first of all, we'll take the bottom. That's a side. That's a side. Move those out of the way. And we will put the back on next okay so we've gone ahead and we've nailed the back to the bottom next I guess we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll put the sides on we'll throw both sides on I've got both sides on and you can see what I mean the walls sit on the bottom that keeps the animal from being able to push 
the walls out, getting between and pushing this way. That's why I nailed everything up through. They can't lift it, no leverage. So now, like I said, I put our little trigger tower on there. What that does is it gives you more string so you can have the lid higher in the air. So it's up out of the way. It also makes it go a lot faster when it comes down catching the animal. Like I said, it doesn't hurt the animal. It might scare them, it might pinch their tail. That's about it. So now we'll go ahead and we'll put the, uh, the top on. Now the top is the piece if you can remember that we rounded on the back side. It's also the piece that I put extra nails in to hold the front on. Uh, now it's still fairly rugged. I mean, we're not, we're not trapping mountain lions here. I think this will be all right. Uh, some people might put another piece on the front so that it couldn't be pushed out, but that's just something that's it's got a possibility of hanging up on on the way down. These work fine the way they the way they are. Really no issue. So we're gonna slide this on here. I don't want to get it too tight, so I want it to be able to have clearance. together with your hammering because uh, you're dealing with little stuff as you can see I already had one split out there and had to add an extra nail again this isn't meant to be finished carpentry this is to catch varmints so there we go the box is complete let's check the hinge out oh that's nice look at that perfect so the only thing we got left now is the trigger we'll set this aside here for the moment and this trigger, all that is, that is a piece of, I guess that's 3 16 dowel. And I've sharpened it to a point on one end. And I also made some little barbs on there so that it will hold the bait better. It won't slide right off. All right. So as you can see, I've got the dowel. I've cut a notch here. And it's not really important where it is in the, on the dowels. Just... Something that the string will grab so the string won't slide off. All right, and that trigger goes through this hole that we drilled in the back. I think that's around a half inch hole. All righty. So now the only other thing we've got to do, take our string. We're going to go up over this tower like this. And we're going to bring this up. And we're going to find a spot where we think it will work best like oh I'd say that that probably right there is a good height so I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it right through the string this is a thumbtack if you want to zero in on that that little thumbtack is holding the string okay so now that goes over the top of that set it on there very gingerly and there you have a set box trap. All it needs is the bait. What happens is the animal comes in, especially if it is a carnivore, there's something that likes to eat meat and you put liver on there. They're very voracious. If it's a weasel or something or a marten, they're going to get in there and they're going to grab it and they're going to start tugging. And as soon as they start tugging, this little stick in here that the bait is on is going to start moving. I'm going to wiggle it from the outside so I don't get my fingers pinched. I'll show you what happens. And you've got a caught animal, but they're not going to be very happy. So this is the kind of trap you're going to want to check frequently. When you see it closed, it's always a mystery as to what's inside. And that can be another problem. But another advantage to this kind of trap is... Oh, I don't know. Say, for instance, maybe you catch a skunk and you know it's a skunk that's in there. Now, the trap is too small for the skunk to spray. He can't get his tail up. Still going to stink, but not like he's spraying you. So now if you want to get rid of this thing, how this is different from a have a heart, a have a heart trap, you would have to go and you'd have to pull the spring and let the animal out. 
so you're within a couple feet of the animal. You could actually take this thing, take the trigger right out, tie another piece of string onto it, 10 feet long, and look what you can do. So you could be standing 10, 20 feet away, and you can let whatever's in that trap out. And it's going to get over being mad pretty quick when it figures out it can run to the woods. So that's another, another, beneficial, another beneficial thing. But that's how, that's how it works, just with the gravity. And because those little critters can't get a hold, the inside, everything is smooth if you look in there. Nothing, there's nothing to lift. There's nothing to get under. It's just a smooth box inside. They can see a little daylight out the back, but I don't believe they'll ever chew a hole through that in time. If you want to let what you catch go unharmed, that's totally up to you. If you want to dispatch the animal, I have found the best way to do that is in a bucket of water. Take trap and all, leave it closed, go right over and put it in a bucket of water and let it sit. A couple minutes, your problem's taken care of. These traps work really good in areas where you can't put out leg hole traps or leg, you know, anything that's going to hurt other animals. I've even caught mice in these before. It's not what it's made for, but every now and then they'll get in there and they'll bite at the bait and it'll wiggle that stick and down she comes. If you're trying to catch a weasel, you're going to want meat. That's what weasels eat. So you're going to want to go with something like... Uh, Beef liver, and I use liver because it's tough. They get their, fing their little fangs into it and they pull. So that's a good choice. If you're after something like a rabbit, something like that, you could put an apple or a piece of apple on the end of that. All that really matters is, is something on the end of this stick. Anyway, there you go. That's your typical, simple, homemade box trap. You can make it with scrap lumber. You can make it with hand tools. Almost cost-free, and I'm telling you, they're very effective. It'll cost you more for the bait than it will for the lumber. So once again, a whiskey and sunshine off grid. And if you like what you saw here today, like, subscribe, click on the notification bell.